Okay, so a couple of you wanted me to do the bridge problems and put on canvas. So here we go. This is the first one. Um, we have a 2,400 kilogram bridge with a length of 24 meters. It's supported by a pillar on opposite ends. If a car with a mass of 960 kilograms is parked 5 meters from one end, what is the force on each pillar? So it's basically asking me to find the normal force provided by each pillar. Now, I know that because the force on the pillar is going to be the same as the pillar on the bridge. So in the pillar on the bridge, that is asking for the normal force. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my free body diagram here. It says the pillars on opposite ends. So there's a normal force provided by the pillar on the left end and a normal force provided by the pillar on the right end. And those normal forces are not equal um, because First of all, there is a 960 kilogram car parked 5 meters from the left end. So there's going to be a force of gravity closer to this pillar, which means that pillar is going to have to support more of the weight. Now, the bridge itself has mass, so it's going to have a force of gravity located at its center of mass because the bridge is uniform then the center of mass is going to be right in the middle and that's going to be a distance of 24 meters divided by 2 which is 12 meters. Now when I'm looking at these equations I want to think the sum of the forces in the y direction are going to be equal to 0. Um, so N1 plus N2 is going to equal the force of gravity of the car and the force of gravity on the bridge. Now because I'm trying to find N1 and N2, I can't just use this equation. I don't know either one of those, so I need another equation to help me out. So I know that some of the torques also have to equal zero. So my first job is to set my pivot. It does not matter where I set my pivot, but because I normally read left to right, I like to set my pivot on the left side to start these types of problems. So that means that this normal force is not going to cause any torque because it's applied at the pivot. The radius is zero, therefore no torque. So I'm going to have this torque plus the torque caused by this force has to equal the torque caused by this normal force. It's in equilibrium. If this normal force could not support that, then this whole bridge would rotate that way. And um, if for some reason this force was larger than those two combined, the bridge would actually rotate that way. So we know it has to be in rotational equilibrium here. So I'm going to say the force of gravity of the car times the radius. I'm looking at torques now. So times the radius of the car plus the force of gravity on the bridge times the radius of the bridge. That has to equal the normal force times um, the distance or the length of the bridge. I'm just going to put um, R here knowing that this is 24 meters. So now I want to start plugging in numbers. So the force of gravity on the car is going to be 960 times 5 plus 2400 times 12 has to equal N2 times this radius, well what is that radius? It's from my pivot. So from here to here, the length of the bridge is 24 meters, so that must be 24. Okay, now when I solve for this, I need a calculator. I'm going to do 960 times 5 plus 2400 times 12. This simplifies to 33,600 equals N2 times 24. Divide by 24 on both sides. Ed Ed 2 equals 
1,400 newtons. Okay, I didn't multiply by 9.8. Ah, because it's mass times 9.8. This has to be the force of gravity. I need to multiply by 9.8. So let me redo that here. 9.8 times 60 times 5 plus 2400 times 12. Now divided by 24. Use this calculator. I'm cleaning times 960 times 5 plus 2400 times 1.8 times 12. Okay, you actually get this simplifies to 329280. Divide that by 24. And you get into to be 13,720 newtons. Now, once you have N2, finding N1 is pretty easy because you just have um, N1 plus N2 has to equal the force of gravity of the car, which is 960 times 9.8 plus the force of gravity of the bridge, which is 2400 times 9.8. When you solve this, you will get N1 equals 19,208, approximately, and that's Newton's. Sorry for the mess up there, guys. Okay, so here's our second problem. We have some bridge going east to west. It's supported by two pillars. It says the bridge is 47 meters long with pillars 5 meters from the west end. So I know this is going to be 5. There's a pillar there. And 10 meters from the east end. So that's going to be 10. So I know there is a normal force here and a normal force here on the bridge. Um, how much force is applied on each of the pillars. So there's no car, so right in the middle of this 47, there's going to be a force of gravity. Hello. So your force of gravity of the bridge, and that occurs right at the bridge's center of gravity. We assume the bridge is a uniform bridge. So to find our normal force, I'm going to use the same equations. I have to say N1 plus N2 equals Fg, um, or the some of the torques have to equal zero. So the force of gravity times this distance has to equal N2. times that distance. So from there I'm just going to solve for my values. If the hardest part of this problem is really just figuring out my radi my radii radiuses. <laughs> so halfway between forty seven is going to be 23.5, if I can do math today. So from here to here is 23.5 meters. If I subtract 5 from that, then from here to here, or that R, is going to be 18.5 meters. Now, this is 47. So from here to the second pillar is 37 meters. 
but in order to find this R2, I have to do 37 to minus 5, so this R2 is 32 meters. And now we just need to solve. I'm going to start by finding N2. Again, N1 is not going to cause a torque because it's right here at the end. So my force of gravity is going to be the mass of the bridge times 9.8 times the radius of 18.5 meters. That's going to equal N2 times this 32. Okay, when I do that, let's see what I get. Um, 9250 times 9.8 times 18.5 times 32. I get about 52,000. 52,407 newtons. Now I'm going to use this equation. N1 plus 52,407 has to equal the force of gravity 9.8 times 9,250. So in one is going to equal 9.8 times 9,250 minus 52,407, 38,243 newtons. And there's my two normal forces. Okay, so a couple things about the bit, the bridge problem. You always want to use the fact that all of your forces in the y direction have to be equal to zero. And you want to use the fact that all your torques have to sum to be zero. Remember this this means that we're going to set um, our clockwise torques equal to our counterclockwise torques. Hello.